Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back again to talk about the new essences in 8.2. Specifically, just a bit of a tier list or a big run through of what we've seen from the essences thus far. So, big rundown of the essences. All of these are going to be role specific or even role agnostic. Uh, different power-ups that you're going to be able to get in 8.2 in the patch drops. There's going to be like a 30-45 minute quest to unlock your Heart of Azeroth on your neck piece. And then based off of the level of your neck, you're going to be having access to one major power, which you get almost immediately. And then you have multiple stamina nodes that are able to come out and just kind of separate the spaces in between, followed by two more lesser node slots, which are the minor powers. So... Every essence has a major and a minor. You only have one major slot, which like I said, you get almost immediately, and there's two minor slots that you get there. So every essence that we're gonna be looking at today has a major and a minor component. If you slot something into the major slot, you get the major and minor effects together. The minor, you only get the minor one, all right? The minor ones are unlocked at 55 and 65 on the neck. And like I said, there's a little stamina nose you get in between just to raise your HP, and that's about it. So, what are the ones that I'm excited about right now? PTR, after testing about seven or eight bosses so far, actually six out of eight bosses so far on PTR. We've gone through some of the heroic testing, and so far, Disc has had, and Holy for that matter, a couple of really strong performers, and some of them that just, I think, need a little bit more tuning to them, but could be very good in the future. So, PTR, everything subject to change, keep that in mind. First one I want to talk about is the Ever-Rising Tide. The major power is called Overcharge Mana, so keep that in mind whenever you see it. But let's start with the passive effects first. Some of the passive effects are going to actively change the major effects, so it's important to look at those first. The minor effect, your heals have a chance to grant you either intellect or mana. Chance of receiving the mana increases with your missing mana. 20% chance to gain both effects. This is the level 3, the rank 3 as you're seeing right here. And the reason why it's going to be rank 3 is your progressively unlocking greater appearances and greater power-ups and boosts for these. So over time, you're going to gain more mana or more intellect the higher that you level them. So this one, for example, is gated behind rep for the unshackled or whatever the alliance equivalent is going to be. So as you progressively get higher rep with them, you're able to buy a higher level essence. Rank 4 is only going to be cosmetic, but you get that randomly through Paragon Caches. Getting mana out of your passive effect, and now the major effect, it's called Overcharge Mana. On a 30 second cooldown, overcharge the Heart of Azeroth, causing each spell you cast to increase your healing by 4% for 10 seconds, and granting 10% haste, but halting your mana regen. So over a 10 second period, you get 10% haste, and no mana regen, and you gain a stacking buff for increased healing. So the stacking buff for increased healing will go past that original 10 seconds. So usually you're able to get 8 to 10 casts off in that period of time. And then afterwards you have 10 seconds of just increased haste. This is amazing for discipline. Actually pretty busted. Uh, you're able to ramp very quickly, very efficiently, and then you're carrying some 30-40% healing buff into your DPS run so i use this on our testing on my ramp ups and the fact that it's a 30 second cooldown means you have it up for every conceivable mechanic out there so you're always having a massive power up it's really good right so very very powerful i think this has potential to get nerfed but it does have a downside which is the halting mana regen but if you take the major effect you also get the minor so you do regen quite a bit of mana back in return very nice to be able to have access to that, and it further puts Disc in a position where you're going to be leaning on Innervates and Wisdoms and any external mana you can to further your throughput. But by taking it, you gain an incredible advantage on that one. And that's where I think Disc is probably heading. This will probably be a very good trait for a number of other healers as well, but we're going to have to play it around with it just a little bit more. It's also very flexible for 5 mans, being able to increase your haste as you're multi-dotting and dealing damage to different enemies is very good, and then being able to use that increased healing to just continue atonement damage, damage into healing, or if you need to really spam somebody, you have access to that one as well. So, great to be able to keep that in mind. Another big one on my list is the Well of Existence. The passive effect is the Well, where 20% of your overhealing is stored in the Well. The cap is your maximum health. It's not listed here, but it's your maximum HP. 
you heal a target under 60%, the well releases some of its stored healing into them. And it's kind of like a trickle healing. Every every half second or every second, it will just push out a little healing, a little healing, a little healing, and that'll be it. You kind of see it as like a space potato chip following you around, and then it fills up into like an Azerite globe, uh, Azerite sphere that follows you soon afterwards. Uh, it does reset on the pole, so you don't have to worry about charging it up in advance. So, important to keep that in mind. Now, the active effect... It releases all healing stored in the well into an ally, and it's amplified by 20%. The well will not release more healing than needed to fully heal a target. It's a 15 second cooldown, it's single target, and it never overheals. Uh, I think when I used it, I overhealed by 0.1%, maybe. Something like that. So it's incredibly accurate. It's incredibly accurate, and it's very easy to be able to use and top somebody off. The thread of this is, in a raiding environment, if you use this, Anytime burst damage goes down on everybody and everybody drops below 60%, the well just spews healing out onto all those targets. And then you lose the potential of having the 20% buff. Now that being said, if you're in any kind of burst fights with lots of spot healing required, I think Fetid Devourer would be a fair example of a fight where this would be incredible to run with in raids. But in general, this seems to be more of a standout for Mythic Plus, as long as you're not falling too far behind. When I ran a dungeon and I played a hyper-aggressive build, this worked very well in many instances, but if you ever get into a moment where there's tons of damage out on everybody, your well will quickly deplete and heal everybody and not give you the 20% bonus, and then you're struggling to be able to refill the bar as well. So there is a potential threat on that one. One of the things that you're seeing out of many DPS classes is the Vision of Perfection. Now this reduces the cooldown of a major ability by a certain amount, and increases your versatility by a small portion, and then gives you an extra effect whenever you activate that ability. For Discipline, it's Rapture. For Holy Priest, it's Divine Hymn. For all the other healers, it's their raid cooldown, right? So Divine Hymn, Trank, Revival, etc. Revival does actually Master Spell, so interesting on that end, right? That being said, for Discipline in particular, activating Rapture on a random basis is often horrible, uh, I'll just say it. Often it's not good, and it's not really something that you want to be able to have just randomly proccing. If you just go for the minor effect, where you just have baseline cooldown reduction, could be okay, but often you don't really need that frequent of Raptures, it kind of depends on the encounters. Often I find myself just holding on to Rapture maybe a little bit longer on the average encounter, so we'll have to see. Uh, if you were going to go with the, the major power for it, it just activates randomly for 35% of its base duration, and you gain you and two other people gain haste. Seems okay, but not really a top flight one that you want to go off of. Um, Vitality Conduit is another one that stands out, where the minor effect targets of your heals have a very high chance to absorb HP from the highest health ally within 50 yards. So this is, it kind of just like leeches health from one target, gives them to another, but it doesn't actually give you any more healing. So in situations where some person's topped off, you're able to transfer even more healing into them, seems fine. But if you're ever getting into a situation where everybody's taking damage, it seems like a pretty big threat. So in many cases, this could be a strong minor power for like tanking, uh, or sorry, for using for your tank in Mythic Plus or in certain situations where they're going to be taking heavy damage, but then keep in mind that it also causes them, causes the other target to take damage that you eventually have to refill. So keep in mind that it doesn't really grant you any more healing, it just spreads out the pressure a little bit more onto different targets, which seems okay in a raiding environment if it does it frequently enough. For example, it could be really strong there where you're just constantly dealing a little bit of damage to other targets to heal the tank, Especially in fights, like I mentioned, that are very bursty in nature, this could be a solid minor power to take. The Major directs the Vitality Conduit towards an ally every half second for 6, so 12 ticks. They absorb about 12k health from the highest health ally within 30 yards. So it constantly will leech HP from other targets to focus heal this one. If your target reaches full HP, jumps to the lowest health nearby target for the remaining duration. So, over this 6 second channel, you are just going to be topping off random targets. Um, or topping off your primary target, and then it jumps around if need be. So, decent if you're going to be having lots of single target damage onto it, but I don't think this is going to be something you'll really be able to, or really want to be running with in a raiding environment, and might have some upsides in M+. There's a number of these effects, and it kind of depends on the delivery system of them. The Well of Existence, for example, accumulates your overheal and dumps it into one target. The Vitality Conduit will leech HP from other people to heal your primary target, right? So, 
In some cases, it starts bringing everybody else down at that expense, and looking at certain things like Grievous, I mean, it seems like a low cooldown way to start redirecting health pools, similar to a Spirit Link Totem. But the extra focus single target is a pretty big boon for Mythic Plus, both in the mat the passive and in the active abilities. So this, I think, might be one to watch for for a number of different healers. One of the ones we have seen and had some pretty high expectations for was Lifebinder's Invocation. So the passive effect first, your heals have a very high chance to implant a seed in a target causing a 200 healing every 0.8 seconds for 15. If the target takes damage, the seed bursts, healing them for 4k. The active ability implants 40 of these seeds divided over all allies. Seeds that expire unused reduce the cooldown of this ability. Now this was one that I really had high hopes for from a Holy Priest perspective, but once I actually had a chance to play around with it, it seems like this is just more of an issue with tuning. So far, the hot component of it doesn't really heal for that much, and maybe you just have to time it well before abilities actually go off, but the second somebody takes damage, they burst like a prayer of mending and you're trying and you're losing out on potentially the hot effect of it. It seemed that the Life Binders was a little bit under on the undertuned side compared to some different abilities and some of the other uh, Azrite essences that were very good. This could be something to watch for in the future, but it seems right now that's just okay. Interesting little tidbit is that Echo of Light can proc seeds, and seeds when they burst will proc Echo. So there's potential for an endless loop, but if the tuning isn't great, then I don't see this being run too often. The Memory of Lucid Dreams, your spells and abilities have a chance to refund half of the mana you spent on them, heal you for a small amount, and increase your versatility by a pretty substantial amount, about four or 500 here. This minor effect gave me about an instant mana pot's worth over a four to five minute fight, something along those lines. So it gave me, I'd wanna say 16 to 17 mana, 16 to 17k mana, so a little bit more than an instant mana pot, but you're only taking that, and that takes up the spot of a passive. The active clears your mind and attune yourself with the Heart of Azeroth, increasing your mana regen rate by 100% and your leech by 800. So a very large amount of leech that you gain out of this and a lot of mana regen. Uh, three minute cooldown lasts about 12 seconds. So you're going to gain a pretty decent amount of mana back over the course of that three minute or that 12 second period. You regen mana about 4,000 every five seconds. So by increasing it by 100, it's gonna be 12 seconds long. Doing just a little bit of math, you're gonna get, you know, probably a mana pot and a half, two mana pots uh, over the course of a standard encounter. Bit of extra mana, and that can be good for a lot of classes that are very hungry for it. But on the other side, you have to look at the availability of more mana because not only are you getting mana from the instant effect, but you're also getting it from the passive effect. So very mana hungry classes that don't want to be using something like overcharge mana, which halts your mana regen, could potentially see some play on that one. One of the ones that I think most healers are going to run with on progression, but doesn't necessarily increase their throughput a hefty amount, is the Artifice of Time. Now, just taking the minor effect, your fields have a very high chance to grant the target about 300 haste and speed for eight seconds. When I played around with this, I had about 50% uptime on my tank, uh, about 30 to 40% uptime on most DPS in a raiding environment. So for this, having four to five healers all with this uh, passive effect, you were able to gain a massive amount of haste onto everybody constantly throughout the entirety of the, the fight. The entire raid getting small mini lust from all of their healers was just incredibly helpful. That was one of the things that I think would be really powerful to be able to take and help you a lot on tight damage checks. So I think this is going to be the passive effect that almost everybody's going to want to farm immediately as quickly as possible, even if they don't use the active effect. The active effect is standstill, creating a time vortex around a friendly target. So it absorbs damage and it absorbs healing. So these are two different pools. The Void Stone has a, an absorb amount and if you deal damage or are dealt damage to you or you are healed, it takes away from that pool, right? These are two separate pools that the, that the Artifice of Time has, and it basically acts kind of like a pseudo stagger, right? So if you take 350,000 damage, you also get healed for 350,000, it starts damaging and healing you at the same time and they start canceling each other out, right? It also, once you have the rank three, the damage is reduced by 20%. So basically it gives you 10 seconds or however long it takes for you to take that damage, it gives you that time to be able to get your bearings, get your 
power together, really. And then you're able to stabilize just a little bit later on. So it seems like it could have some potential uses, but at a four minute cooldown, it seems very difficult to be able to go after properly. This might just be something that's more PVP oriented. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one, but at the moment doesn't seem like it's gonna be too powerful in general. I think the discipline standpoint that you're gonna be running with thus far is gonna be something with overcharged mana, the Ever Rising Tide, uh, major and minor trait, the Well of Existence, Artifice of Time, and potentially the Vitality Conduit are the standouts to me as the minor effects that you could be going after here. Those are the ones that kind of stand out as being those traits you might want to be going after and stand out as one of the ones that can be most beneficial to your raid group. There's a lot of fights thus far we've seen in the Eternal Palace that have lots of burst damage and lots of room for you to be able to focus heal more healing into tanks. Some of those fights have been absolutely tank crushers and we'll have to see on tuning how that ends up going in the future, all right? Let me know what you guys think. This has just been a first look and we'll be definitely updating these more and updating them into the written guides and into the 8.2 guides once the content is out and released. We're back to making YouTube videos, so thank you so much for being patient with me, guys. Be sure to check out the live stream linked in the description below for more video content goodness. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I am Jack and I'll catch you guys all tomorrow.